Not long afterwards, classes came to an end and school let out. I stopped by Mitsuru's classroom to pick her up and then we headed for the shopping district. <laughs> Last I checked, not all that long. Nonetheless, I hadn't spent time alone with Mitsuru after school in quite a while. I wouldn't let you go either way. I mean, it's pretty crowded around here. But when I go to pick out a present, I'll have to let go of you then. Even if we are not shopping for presents, I don't mind going out with you. Michiru is not all that fond of crowds, and it's dangerous for her to go out alone. That was all, really. Just like she said, if the opportunity hadn't presented itself, Michiru probably wouldn't have wanted to leave the house. Michiru would definitely come along with me if I told her I wanted to hang out somewhere outside, but for her to go outside with her own objective in mind was quite a rare thing. Well, even when I am not holding your hand, I'll be right here for you. That's because you're acting like a good big sister. She had agreed to go shopping for a present for little Michiru, and she was seriously considering what to get after all. My little sister was helping to buy a present for my other little sister, so I wanted to be a good big brother myself. Hey, knock it off! <laughs> Michiru responded to my disappointed tone with a childish joking smile. Neither of us were being serious. Michiru had gotten the idea to get her younger self a present before I'd even invited her along. Had it not been for her advice, I wouldn't have had any idea of what kind of animated films or picture books to buy for her. I'd kinda like to buy a doll for her too. What do you think? Now that you mention it, I guess that suggestion did come up. I suppose for a girl who's staying at home alone, that would be a better choice. They'd probably have a lot at that store Makoto was so entranced by. As that memory returned to me, I headed in the direction of the aforesaid store. The huge stuffed animal on the counter was gone, but in its place was a row of stuffed animals that seemed to be part of the same series. Hey Michiru, what kind of stuffed animal do you think would be best? Hmm, I'll do my best. For what it's worth, Makoto and Misaki gave me a few pointers about it. Though having several different recommendations from them was making me hesitate a little bit. I suppose a guy like me wouldn't have the same kind of taste. I'd bought Michiru presents in the past, but since we were the same age, we had more in common with each other. Not only that, we'd never gone shopping together to buy a gift for someone else like this before. Hugging a stuffed animal, eh? The first thing that came to mind was a squirrel, and right after that, a bear. Either one of them would suit her. What one should I choose, though? Hey Michiru, do you think little Michiru would like a squirrel or a bear more? That doesn't help. It would be easier to pick if either one would make her happy, but I wanted to make the best choice possible. And it was hard to eliminate either option because they all looked so cute sitting on the counter along with all of the other dolls in the series.
兄様が似合うと思って選んだものですからミチルが喜ばないはずがありませんそうそう。What would suit the Michiru well? I tried to imagine it, but either one of them would suit her, so that just made things more problematic. The squirrel would emphasize her beauty, whereas the bear made me think of her smile. I wanted to see both, so I didn't know what to do. Tada! She t e you n a r a m i t a m e m o d e s g a d a k s h i m i t a t o k i n o t e z a w a r i m o j u s h i s t e h o s h i d e s n e Oh, I get it. Owing to her blindness, Michiru was more aware of things which she couldn't see. Or maybe it was because she's a girl. I took a few different stuffed animals down from the shelf and touched them to verify the texture of their fur. Some felt fluffy, others felt silky, but all of them felt pleasant. Alright, I've decided. I'll get the bear. Both of them would suit little Michiru, but thinking of which one would bring her greater comfort while she's alone, the bear would be the better option. So, this is it. Then, I'll go back to the bear. Yeah, wouldn't want to keep little Michiru waiting. The fact that Michiru didn't ask me to spend more time alone with her might have been a sign that, little by little, she was changing too. Yeah, alright, I'll go buy it. Since I was happy to see this change in her, I walked up to the register and asked to buy two stuffed animals. We're home! I headed in the direction of my room while announcing my presence, at which I heard the sound of tiny footsteps racing toward me in response. Whoa there! You're full of pep, little Michiru! You weren't lonely? Is that so? Good girl! Little Michiru clung to me, a great big smile plastered on her face. Little Michiru knowingly nodded her head at Michiru's words. You two get along well. Hey, quit it! Michiru showed me a mischievous smile, and I ended up having to smile back instead of scolding her any further. Michiru's sense of humor is rather vague at times, though I had a feeling she was half serious about that one. Present? Yes, that's right. I got to get you to get. I picked it out together with Michiru. We hope you'll like it. I handed one of the bags I'd been carrying to little Michiru, who took the gift into her small arms. It was too big for such a small girl to hold, but her smile seemed to have become directly proportional to the size of the stuffed animal in her hands. Yes, of course. As I gave her an,、uh, an approving nod, Michiru fumbled with the packaging while she opened it. I thought it suited you. What do you think? Little Michiru hugged the stuffed animal tightly and showed us a big smile. It warmed my heart to see her wearing that childish smile on her face. Don't run or you'll trip! <laughs> little Michiru replied cheerfully, and then we heard her cute little footsteps running off in the direction of Didi's room. After watching her leave, I turned my attention to Michiru, who seemed like she wanted to say something. <laughs> Oh, so she really did say I bought little Michiru a present a minute ago on purpose after all. Should I not have mentioned that? 
You did help me pick it out after all. Yes, ma. Nisama ga iranda to itta hou ga. Michiru wa yorokonda to omoimasu yo. Not at all. Besides, she seemed happy about it either way. So you koto de wa nai no desu ga. I could kind of understand why she wasn't satisfied. If it were Michiru in that situation, she would have been happier to receive a present just from me. For me, it was more important that your own feelings got conveyed to her as well. Right. Anyway, here. Taking Michiru by the hand, I pass the other bag I'd been holding to her. The one I bought for you. We were going out to buy my little sister a present today, after all. Both of you, that is. I thought it suited you. It's comforting to the touch, so it should feel nice when you cuddle with it. Her response sounded a bit clumsy, as if she didn't know what to say. When I saw Michiru like that, it made me drip over my own words as well. Not only that, I couldn't decide which one would suit little Michiru the best. So I just picked the one that suited you the best, and then I naturally knew which one would suit little Michiru too. I imagined the big sister and the little sister holding stuffed animals together, and I felt these ones matched you both perfectly. Why was I trying to make excuses for myself now? I gave a present to the younger sister, so I wanted to give the older sister a present too. That should be good enough. <laughs> Michiru's amazed and confused expression slowly turned into a smile as she started to calm down. She definitely didn't say that to criticize me. Rather, she seemed to be basking in the pleasant warmth of the moment. If the younger sister was the only one to get a present, then the older one would be sad, wouldn't she? Both of you are my incomparably precious little sisters. Michiru's arms clutching the gift against her chest weren't as small as little Michiru's. Her gleeful expression, however, was exactly the same. So you guys better not fight too much. She seemed to be a little dissatisfied with that conclusion, so she put her forehead against my shoulder. That childish mannerism was so cute, I immediately pulled her into my arms. Well, just try to remember that it makes me happy when you two get along. In other words, she tried to get along, and she didn't seem dissatisfied with that conclusion. It's not like they were on such bad terms to begin with. With today's events, they got a little closer than they were before. I know that. She nuzzled her face into my chest and let out a soft sigh. Michiru, basking in her happiness, didn't tuck me back. She was still clutching her precious present tightly against her chest. Our sentimental moment was interrupted by eager footsteps that came racing back toward us, but I didn't mind being interrupted. Michiru and I were both looking forward to all the time the three of us were going to be spending together. After we got changed out of our uniforms, the three of us naturally gathered in my room. <laughs> Little Michiru sat right next to me, hugging her own stuffed animal with a rapturous delight. She'd given it a cutesy nickname, and her eyes were sparkling. So wonderful, she truly was adorable. It was worth agonizing over this present if it had made her this happy. Here, 
You're welcome. I see you know how to say thank you and everything too. Good girl. Little Michiru really is such a good girl. She's polite, and I can take her out in public without being embarrassed about her behavior. And the way she happily played with her stuffed animal and flipped through the picture book, just as any other child would, was just too darn cute for words. Michiru was set on one side of me, with little Michiru on the other, effectively flanking me from all directions. Michiru smiled, but that smile seemed to be a scheming one. Huh? That wasn't enough? I already thanked you earlier, since you helped pick the present out and all. I thought it was unfair if Michiru didn't get a present too, and it was also my way of thanking her for a lot of different things. Michiru showed me a wry smile as she gently hugged the stuffed animal to her chest. You don't need to do that. You just wanted to do that all along, didn't you? It would, but still. The moment she said that, Michiru latched onto my arm. She hugged me in a different way from her stuffed animal, since she was trying to press her body against me. Hey, hey, you don't need to make up that kind of reason for it. If you two are going to fight over that, I have something to tell you. They both hastily bowed their heads, but they were misunderstanding me. You're both my little sisters, so you don't need to be so restrained. As they both looked at me, mystified, I put my hands on both their shoulders and drew them into my embrace. <coughs> I gently combed my fingers through little Michiru's hair, patted Michiru on the back to soothe her and looked at both of them in turn. You don't need to hold back, so just try to get along, alright? They both nodded yes. Good. They almost got into another quabble over nothing, but I was glad to see them resolve their differences so quickly. The warm atmosphere made it feel like we were a real family. That was something I hadn't felt in a long time, and it set me at ease. Yeah, of course. I took my hands off them in order to grab the book, and one of them growled with dissatisfaction. But my hands had to be free to read the book. You guys can lay on my lap if you want. This is just ordinary physical affection between siblings, got it? Touch me anywhere weird, and your name's Mud. <laughs> if you don't hurry up, you will miss out. Stop making weird noises. I suddenly felt a little anxious. Maybe I'd been too hasty here. Should I have went with a different position instead? <laughs> nah, they're cute, so this is fine. This is also a good way of convincing them to put aside their differences. 
和気あいあいな空気で素敵ですねできるメイドの私は家族の団らを陰ながら見守りましょうあのストラックオフタイムあんじょいたヘピーモーメント Little Michiru played enough for today, so it was about time for her to go to bed. I listened to what she was doing, and I could tell that she was still playing with a stuffed bear my brother had given her. Oh, so this is from、uh, Michiru's perspective.、Huh? I still had to the stuffed squirrel that he gave me, which was intended to go together with the one that Little Michiru got. Surely he must have given us these gifts as a way of telling us to get along as well. Little Michiru must feel the love he has for us too. I can sense her happiness. Something's bothering me, however. My birthday is gradually approaching. I wonder if this gift will end up counting as my birthday present as well. No, now is not the time for worrying about such things. Sate, Michiru, soro soro nema shoka. Watashi mada nema tako na yo. Sore demo desu. 兄様にも夜更かしは体に悪いと言われたでしょはーいそれじゃあ私例のところ行ってくるね待ちなさいどうしてあなたが兄様のところへ行くのですか例のところで寝るからだよなりません今日は私の部屋で寝るようにと言われていたでしょうーんうなってもダメです私だって兄様と同じベッドで眠りたいのですから<笑>むしろ兄様に抱かれて眠りたいのですから The guest bedroom had been prepared for little Michiru, but it seemed she had no intention of sleeping there. Ergo, she would be sleeping in our own rooms until she became accustomed to this place, though she would most likely return to her own time before that. そもそも Michiru? あなたは昨夜も兄様と同禁し寝顔を拝見し兄様のお布団で昼寝をしたのでしょにもかかわらず今日もお邪魔するなんてそんな羨ましくもけしからぬことは許しません羨まけしからぬ Had he not told her to sleep in my room, she would already be crawling into his bed. Most vexingly of all, he did have good intentions to help me get along better with little Michiru. So, Michiru is a little b i How could this temptation be so hard to resist? Even my younger self is quite a wily creature indeed. I can't say that! 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 私の部屋でと付け加えていましたさすがです兄様私の行動などお見通しなのですねできればもっと知っていただきたいのですがそう身も心もみちる大丈夫 ?Oh dear just the thought of it has got me excitable I cannot sleep when the flame within me has been lit, so I must calm down and make an effort to convince little Michiru. Were we to go to my dear brother's room, we would only end up bothering him, but that is not what he would want. If all three of us slept together, though, I could suggest that for the next time, were we to sleep on either side of him, I imagine he would not object to that. What happened, Michiru? I'm not sure. 明日のことを考えていただけですさて明日も早く起きなければなりませんしそろそろ寝ましょうかまだ眠くないからご飯読んでこの子は I thought she was well aware that I couldn't see or perhaps she did not truly、really、understand what it meant for someone to be unable to see if that is the case it could be a problem in the future わかりました。少し待っていてください。Standing up, I went to the shelf and took down a book I had read countless times before. 
My dear brother had bought little Michirut three different picture books, but it was not one of those which I was presently choosing. Nor was it a book written in braille. I could read it to her, because I did not even have to see it to remember its contents. Above all, it had pictures of its own, so it was certain to make a child happy. She was a lovable, obedient little girl. I wanted our brother to tell her that though, if I told her, I would just be complimenting myself. I put that thought aside and returned my focus to the book in my hands. I flipped through the pages as I read out the story that my brother had once read to me. As I did, the memories of that time flowered in my mind. It was the time when my world was plunged into darkness. It was the time when I felt nothing but despair at everything and believed that I was truly alone. It was the time when a precious person in my life was able to grant me happiness. While this was all in my past now, it was a future that little Michiru had yet to experience. Remembering that time, my previous frustration with little Michiru disappeared like smoke with a breeze. I could almost feel the anxiety from that time in my life creeping up from the floorboards. Will she become the same as me? Was I such a good girl when I was her age? Will she be able to become the same as me, or will she shut her heart away from happiness when the light disappears from her world? Does she really have to become the same as me? Is there no way for her to grow up without losing sight of the radiant world around her? That is impossible. That mysterious girl had told us that our meeting would eventually draw to a close, to be remembered as but a dream. Even if I told her about her future, she would forget it. Is there any meaning to telling her then? Would it be alright for me to tell her, even if I believed she would remember it? <laughs>